Hi everyone, it's Alice and today we're gonna talk all about historical fiction mysteries. I've done one of these before just about more like contemporary mystery thrillers and I just wanted to do a separate one about historical mysteries because I feel like it's, well it is, its own genre. I think and I love any kind of mystery and I love any kind of book with like an interesting setting or a cool time period so this genre is pretty much perfect for me. So I've got a bunch of favorites to show you and then I've also got a little TBR stack that I'll show you at the end that I've picked from my shelves and we're just gonna go through all of it. We're gonna start with two classics two books by the queen of mystery herself because I can't make this video without mentioning her at least twice apparently and if you don't know the queen of mystery is of course Agatha Christie. So the first book we have is Murder on the Orient Express. I mean the title of this does explain it quite well. It's all about a murder on a train and this is a Poirot mystery so he's on the train and obviously when someone is murdered he tries to find out who has done it. This is a type of like locked room type mystery and it's filled with interesting characters and of course Poirot who is perhaps the most interesting of them all. I feel like the setting of this is really good as well. Like we're on this super luxurious train caught in the middle of a snowstorm and it's just a very clever and interesting but also fun story to read. And if you've never read any Poirot and you want to start somewhere but not at the beginning, I think this is a good place to start actually. Like if you just want to read some of them, this is one of those that you have to read. My second favorite by Christie is, of course, And Then There Were None. And I feel like I mention this book all the time, but it really is very good, so I keep recommending it. And it's one of my favorite mystery novels ever. Like, if someone asks me what my favorite mystery or crime book is, I will probably say this one because I just love it so much. The story in here is about these 10 strangers who are summoned to this island by a billionaire, and they don't have anything in common and they don't know each other, but they all have a horrible secret in their past. They've all done something horrible and someone has decided to punish them for it. So while they're on this island, one by one, they all start dying. I just think this is a genius book. Like it has so many things in it that make it great. Like it has a great setting, really good atmosphere, really interesting characters. And I could not for the life of me figure out what was going on in this book when I read it. And well, to be fair, I can never really figure out Christie's mysteries because she was obviously very good at writing them. But yeah, I just love this book and I love how it gets like progressively darker as we go and you can really tell that the atmosphere gets really like oppressing and dark and it's just very exciting and very, very clever. Next, we have got the first book in the Phryne Fisher series and it is Cocaine Blues by Carrie Greenwood. And I love the series. It's set in the 1920s, which is my favorite time period. And we meet Phryne Fisher who has left England for Australia to become a lady detective. And from the minute she arrives in Melbourne, she is just like thrust into all of these different mysteries. This is just really enjoyable and such a delight to read and most of the stories in this series start with a bang. It's fast paced and the mysteries are really intriguing and like I mentioned I love reading about the 1920s so I love all of that and I love the setting of Melbourne but my favorite thing about these books is definitely the main character. Phryne Fisher is just an absolute boss. <laughs> she's really independent and she's really intelligent and unapologetic about how she wants to live her life and you can really tell that she loves adventure which makes for very entertaining reading for us. Another book that is also set in the 1920s is The Widows of Malabar Hill by Sujatha Massey. This is actually set in India and we meet Bombay's first female lawyer and in this book she investigates this case of this suspicious will on behalf of three Muslim women and these women live in seclusion and because this lawyer is a woman she is the only one who can investigate the case. This again was just a joy to read. It's really charming and engrossing and I just love everything about this book. The setting is fantastic, like 1920s India is just amazing in here and I love the main character and reading about her and we get to read about her investigating this case but also about some stuff that has happened to her which is horrifying but also interesting and one of the things that sort of 
brings this book to another level for me is that it brings up a lot of discussions about women in this time and all of that is really really fascinating. Then we have got a bit of a chunky book and it is The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton and this starts off in 1654 in a Dutch colony where a world famous detective has been arrested and he is being transported back to Amsterdam as a prisoner and with him is this bodyguard who's also his best friend and this guy is trying to prove the detective's innocence but he can't so the boat sets off and it's clear very quickly that something is wrong <laughs> on this boat because all of these symbols keep appearing everywhere and apparently they belong to a demon. I really enjoy this book even though it is a little bit long and it gets a little bit spooky sometimes which I very much enjoyed. I feel like this is a great mix of mystery, historical fiction, and adventure, all genres that I really like and I loved reading about the characters and all of the like superstition and occult stuff going on in here is really really fun. Next we have got a short story collection because I thought it could be fun to include one of those and it is Sleep No More by P.D. James and this contains six murderous tales and these are some of my favorite like short story crime mystery stories I guess and one of the reasons I really like this is that this author was really really good at creating like viable suspenseful and creepy mysteries in such a short format which is incredibly impressive and you get really sucked into these and she was just a great storyteller so these are really fun to read and they make you think. Then we have got more 1920s fiction with The Mitchford Murders by Jessica Fellows and this starts off in England and we meet this woman who escapes London and escapes her abusive uncle and she gets this position in the countryside with this family and what happens is that she and the eldest daughter of the family ends up getting involved in this murder on a train. I really enjoyed this. The mystery is interesting and England in the 1920s is like the perfect backdrop and I really enjoyed getting to know the characters and this is just a very easy book to read and it's very easy to get into. I will say though that a lot of you might know that the Mitford family was a real family so the characters in this book are like very loosely based on that family but Honestly, they could have easily just been named something else and you would have never known. Like, it's not a big part of the story. So don't go into this thinking you're gonna get to read about the Mitford sisters because that's not really what you're gonna get in here. This is just a cozy mystery and some of the characters happen to be like very loosely based on some real people. It really is just a very cozy mystery. So I think going into it with the right expectations is kind of important. You can just completely disregard the Mitford part really and just enjoy the ride. Next we have got another book that I feel like I mention all the time but it's because it's really good and it is Perfume by Patrick Susskind and this is translated from German and it's set in 18th century France where we meet this boy who is born with an extraordinary sense of smell and as he grows up he becomes this like genius of scents and he basically starts collecting smells and it gets real weird. This is a mystery but it also kind of borders on horror so it's pretty creepy and the main character in here is a very interesting creature shall we say and seeing him throughout this book is like very interesting but also very kind of horrifying and Yes, this is a story about a murderer, but there's also a lot of other things going on in this book. So it digs quite deep and it's a very, very unique book. Like it's impossible to explain, but the writing is amazing. It's really, really intense, but it's very, very good. And if you like creepy stories, you gotta read this one. Second to last of my faves, we have got The Strings of Murder by Oscar de Muriel. And let me tell you, this book is a good time. It's set in Edinburgh in 1888 where this inspector has been dispatched from Scotland Yard to investigate the murder of a violinist and when he gets to Scotland he finds himself partnered up with this very superstitious and slightly chaotic 
Scottish man. This again has a fantastic setting and I felt like the time period was brought to life really well and it's set at the height of the Jack the Ripper panic so it has a lot of atmosphere and I just think it's so much fun and the reason I think it's so much fun is that the pairing of the main characters in this book is just perfect. Like we've got this really uppity, insufferable Englishman teamed up with this really weird and slightly violent Scottish man and together they're just so entertaining and they go running across the city and it's a mess but it's a perfect mess and it's the kind of book that's a little bit ridiculous, like it's kind of over the top but I feel like it leans into it the perfect amount. The mystery in here is really intriguing as well and I loved all of the like occult and supernatural stuff and it's just a very very entertaining read. Lastly we're returning to the 1920s once again with The Diviners by Libba Bray and this is set in New York and we meet this young woman who has been shipped off to the city to live with her occult obsessed uncle and this young woman has a secret. She has this supernatural ability that she's never told anyone about and it's only brought her trouble so far but then the uncle gets involved in this like murder mystery and she thinks that maybe her power can help solve the case. All of that is really interesting but there's also something else going on in this book. There's this thing looming in the background which is a great evil that has been awakened somehow so we've got that going on as well and this is just a really fun and engrossing book. It's really easy to get into and get lost in and the setting of 1920s New York is just fantastic. Moving on to my TBR stack, I've picked out five books to show you, although I do have plenty more, but these are like at the top of my list right now. So first we have got this lovely book, which is called The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This is set in London in 1791 and we follow this female apothecary who help women free themselves of the men in their lives by providing them with poison. And I think what happens is that she keeps track of all the women she's given poison to and the men that they have murdered. And something happens to that list that like threatens to ruin everything, I think. I just think that sounds really interesting. Although I do think this is the kind of book that has like dual timelines. So one is set in the past and one is set more in the present which I don't always love, but we'll see how it is in this book. I do love the concept of the story, like women helping other women, even if it is by murdering people. Secondly, we have got the fourth book in the Mitford Murders series. So it's in the same series that I mentioned being one of my faves, and it is The Mitford Trial by Jessica Fellows. And I think what happens in here is that we return to these characters, and see what they're up to. I don't want to like, talk too much about it because a lot has happened in the other books and I don't want to give anything away but I'm pretty sure we've made it to like 1933 in this book and there's something about a glitzy cruise and a murder which sounds like fun and I think this is going to be great because I really really enjoy these books. Then we have got a book that I've been recommended loads and it is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd and this is set in England in the 1800s, like somewhere in there, and we meet this female detective who gets a baffling case. And honestly, it's baffling for me too because I can't really figure out what it's about. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's about like a child who has gone missing and this kid is rumored to have some sort of supernatural abilities. I think this is going to be great because so many people have recommended it to me. And I think it's the kind of story that takes us to the darker and perhaps more interesting parts of London, which I'm really looking forward to. Second to last, we have Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kang, and this cover is really beautiful, which makes me even more excited to read it. And it's set in New York in 1899, and a woman finds her sister dead, and the sister has been drained of blood, and she has two puncture marks in her neck. So, you know, is it a vampire, perhaps? That's what the sister wants to find out, and I also want to find out, I guess. I kind of hope it is. I think that would be fun. Lastly, we have another sequel. It's the follow-up to The Strings of Murder, and it's called A Fever of the Blood, again by Oscar de Muriel, and I'm just really looking forward to returning to these ridiculous characters and seeing what they're up to. We again return to historical Edinburgh, and there's something in here about an asylum and a patient that escapes, and then there's something about a mute 
and black magic and all of that sounds great. I'm sure it's gonna be fun at least if it's anything like the first book. Okay everyone, those are all the books that I had to show you today and I would of course love to know if you've read any of these or what your favorite historical mystery is. Please tell me all about it because I would love to hear about more because I'm always looking for more because I love them. As usual, links to my Patreon and other social media will be in the description if you're interested and I will see you soon. Bye!